So I want to set up a scene that's actually modeled to real world scale. And that's going to make that scene compatible with all my other scenes as long as they're all modeled to scale. So I'm going to set this to a higher number. The length and width, let's set it to 500. This is now going to create a grid that's 500 centimeters from center to edge or 5 meters. Uh, when I press apply, you'll see now my grid extends out much further. However, now the grid is subdivided too small. So I'm going to change the spacing of the grid lines and the subdivisions. So I'm going to place a major grid line every meter or every 100 centimeters and press apply again. And now when I dolly back, you'll see I have negative 100, positive 100. So I've, these numbers now indicate that the major grid lines are spaced 100 units or 100 centimeters apart. You'll see the minor grid lines here. And the spacing of those minor grid lines is controlled by the, the subdivisions value here. So the minor grid lines are currently showing up at 100 divided by 5, or every 20 centimeters. If I wanted to see them every 10 centimeters, I could set my subdivisions to 10 and hit apply. And now minor grid lines are appearing every 100 divided by 10, or 10 centimeters. And now I've got my grid set up the way I want it. OK, so as soon as you dolly back in your scene, you're probably going to see this. This is called clipping plane. So the default Maya cameras are set up so that they can only see a certain distance into the scene. And anything farther away than that is going to get clipped off. So I'm going to change the clipping plane from my perspective view. So I'm in the perspective view, and I'll go to the view menu, camera attribute editor. Now my attribute editor is loaded. And I'm looking at the shape node for my perspective viewport, or my perspective camera. And here are the clipping planes. A good value for this scene would be a near clipping plane of 1 and a far clipping plane of 10,000. And when I hit Enter now, we don't have that problem with the grid getting cut off. So this value of 10,000 is equal to 100 meters. And in fact, I'll need to do that for all of my cameras. So I'm going to tap the spacebar and go around to each one. View, Camera Attribute Editor, and change all of the cameras. Now that I've set my grid options, the stage is set to create the actual models, the geometry in my scene. In this case, there's only going to be two objects, a ground plane and a sphere. I'm going to turn on Snap to Grids to make it a little bit easier to create my ground plane. So with Snap to Grids turned on, I'll click on the Create menu and go to Polygon Primitives, Plane. Then I'm going to click right where the grid lines meet at 200 units and drag across and release the mouse so that now I've got a ground plane centered right on the origin. If I go to the input node, you'll see that its width and height are exactly 400. So if yours don't say 400, you could just select both of those and type in a value. Likewise, if your ground plane is not centered on the world, you could go and reset the translate values. Optionally, I could increase the number of subdivisions just to make it a little bit easier to see. I can hit the 5 key so I can see shading. Now I'm ready to create my ball. I'll go back to the Create menu. This time I'm going to choose to make a NURBS primitive sphere, just because it looks a little bit better than the viewport. It's a little bit easier for us to see. And I'm going to create that over here in the negative x direction. And if you're not sure which direction is negative x, it's probably a good idea to go to the top view. So I'll tap the spacebar, and in my top view, I can press the F key to frame. And over here is negative x. It's pretty clear now. You can see positive x is this way, negative x is over here. Snapping is still on. 
I'm going to click and drag to create the sphere. Now it's generally over in the area that we want it to be. I'll go back over to my perspective view, tap the space bar, tumble around, get oriented. In the sphere's input node, the radius is about 30 centimeters, so the ball is about 60 centimeters in diameter, which means it's about two feet. I could set that to exactly 30 if I wish. Or if I want the ball to be smaller, maybe I could set it to maybe 10. I think I'll split the difference and set it at 15. I can grab the Move tool and move the ball up. And as you'll notice, as I move the ball, it's actually snapping to the grid. I'm just going to move it up, maybe say 100 units. Then I can turn off snapping to the grid. And now I'm in a good place to save my scene. So I'll go to the File menu and choose Save Scene. And note where Maya has taken me into my current project folder inside the Scenes subfolder. Maya has a very handy pull down up here at the top of this browse window that lets me choose current scenes. I'm actually saving currently as a Maya binary, which is the default, but I actually recommend that you save as Maya ASCII. That means it's stored as a text file that's human readable. I'm going to choose to save as Maya ASCII. And in fact, I can even go into the options here and permanently change my preference to my ASCII. Okay, we can click Save Scene As and go back. From now on, I'll always save as my ASCII. And I'll call this one Ball01. Put an underscore in there too. You're going to want to save numbered versions of your scenes instead of overwriting the same scene. Because if you get into trouble, you can always go back to an earlier version that you've saved. There we go, and now we've got our world set up. Before I go any farther, I'd like to make sure that my orthographic cameras are where they should be so that I'll be able to see the action in my scene. I'm going to go to the Display menu and choose Show Cameras. And now in my perspective view, if I dolly back, I'll see a bunch of these big green planes. Each one of these is, in fact, a camera. And if I click on one of them, and I have my channel box or attribute editor visible, the name of the camera will be shown. So that's my front view. This is my top view. And this is my side view. Cameras are only able to see in one direction. And that direction is indicated by the line sticking out. So the top view is able to see downward. I'm going to grab my Move tool. I'm just going to move these out a little bit to make sure that my orthographic cameras enclose everything in the scene. Because if the ortho cameras are not set properly, then parts of your scene may mysteriously disappear in the viewports. Here's an example. Look in the front view. As I move the front view icon forward and back, parts of my scene are getting cut off. The ball is visible, and then it's invisible. The grid is going away. And it's because of the position of the camera. It can only see in front of itself. So we've got to make sure that these have all been moved out to enclose the scene. Then I can go back to the display menu and choose hide cameras because my cameras have all been set. I won't need to adjust them again. 